I want to talk a little bit about the manipulation of the precious metals market, mainly gold and silver, but for purposes of this video, we'll be looking at silver. I want to present to you an angle that I don't think anybody is talking about out there, and I want to see what you think about this. First, um, I just want to give you, um, let's go over uh, some facts and a couple of charts here. Here's a chart of silver, okay, where you can see that it is definitely, the price of silver is definitely being suppressed on the market. Now here's a chart that's comparing silver performance to the Dow. And as you can see, um, the Dow's very erratic here, but you see that silver is following the trends of the Dow. Here it's up, here it's down, here it's up again, here it slopes down. It's performing in sync with the Dow. Now, I've wor I worked on Wall Street for several years and it's always been my experience that when the Dow falls, precious metals rise. And as you can see by that chart here going back to 2011, that's not what's happening at all. As a matter of fact, precious metals, silver in particular, is exactly in step with the Dow. So that, to me, is an aberration in the performance of the metal. But we know that it is all completely being manipulated, the price being suppressed by the major banks and central governments. We know that central governments and um, major banks are acquiring gold and silver in mass. Why would they be doing that? Now in this report here by Lorimer Wilson, editor-in-chief, it was produced in two th uh, July 2007. He makes some interesting statements here. He says that oh, October 2010, the trend of rising open interest appears to have abated. The inventories have been evaporating and steadily, steadily, and thus the ratio of the two measures has continued to trend higher. In fact, since 2009, the ratio of paper silver to physical silver has increased fourfold from approximately eight times to almost 33 times looking at 2009, mm, 2009 to where it stands today. Now that is a tremendous increase. We know that the um, open inventories versus the interests of physical silver to paper is way out of whack as shown in the chart here on the top um, compared to registered inventories. And the percentage, like this report stated, has gone up 33% since January of 2009. So in other words, they've increased the amount of paper in circulation for silver um, th by 300 times the amount of actual inventory that's available on delivery. So what does this mean? More specifically, what does this mean to the mining industries that bring this stuff up out of the ground. I want to focus a little bit on the effect that this price suppression on pr precious metals is having and going to continue to have on the mining industries. I'm going to take a quote here from this article. It says, on the one hand, we have the media endlessly bashing these miners as underperformers. Despite the supposedly high bullion prices we've seen in recent years, just look at the charts, um, say the bashers. Yes, we look at the results from our markets. It's clear that these miners are in the midst of their second depression in five years, in the middle of one of the longest, strongest bull markets in history. Hmm. Of course, the myopic media notices nothing unusual about this. Um, Bloomberg reporting 
Bloomberg reported um, a headline that said Barrick leads miners spending faster than earnings rising. So what they're trying to say is that the miners are spending more than the money that their product is bringing in, their, but their product is being suppressed. So they are operating at a deficit because they cannot get the market value of the metals they're bringing up to sustain operations. And what is that going to lead to? He goes on to say that either these miners are reaping high prices for their gold and silver and thus raking in windfall profits, or, they are, or they're struggling and just attempting to stay afloat, as low bullion prices mean they're unable to offset spending with revenues. He goes on to say that the depression being experienced by these miners is real. Uh, if he goes on to say, if we accept that the market, evi the market evidence at face value and ignore the manipulation factor, the message that the market is sending is unequivocal. Bullion prices must rise substantially merely to make this sector su sustainable over the long term. This is key. We need to remember this. Much like we've seen the lying central bankers rape savers and with near zero interest rate and then lecturing us, we, the people, for overspending, we're seeing the same trend taking place with the mining industries, okay? It's an orgy of blame going out <coughs> in that first you drive the investors away from these companies with intentionally manipulating prices and lying about a bubble that's taking place in the industry, and then you lecture them for overspending. Clearly, this rape template's being overused by the overlords. Now, here's the angle I want to throw out there for discussion. What if the central governments and the banksters are intentionally manipulating the prices to drive the mining industries into bankruptcy. Then they swoop in, buy up the mines. Now they control not only the bulk physical reserves of the metals, but they also control wholly the production capability of these metals. My question is, how does that affect us who are holding precious metals. What effect will this have long term if in fact this is a potential ploy that they are scheming underhandedly and not it's not being discussed in the news of course or in the media but what if this is being done? What effect is this going to have on those of us who are saving silver. I mean, will the price go up? Will it go down? Will, will you know, they force it to a level lower than what it is now, um, you know, bankrupting any of us that have put massive amounts of money into stockpiling the physical? Just a thought. I mean, I, y y these people are capable of schemes undreamed of, and nothing is beyond them. Um, so I'd appreciate your comments, thoughts, and I'd also like to throw out there that um, if you're interested on this topic and you're interested in the economy and how to preserve your wealth, I suggest that you subscribe to Gregory Manorino's channel. channel. I'll put a link to his, his uh, YouTube site in the research links below. Thank you, and I hope you're still not sleeping. Are you still sleeping? Are you awake yet? Wake up. Wake up.